Hello everyone, I am Monica Bhushan and today we are starting lecture number 12 of Linear Algebra. In today's class, we are going to see Gauss elimination method under matrix theory. Okay, fine. Why we use Gauss elimination method, right? So what is the use of this method? Using Gauss elimination method, we solve the system of linear equations. Okay, so this method does what? This method allows us to solve the system of linear equations. Okay, and how we will be solving the system of linear equation? So these two questions are there and with the help of these questions, we will be understanding the Gauss elimination method. Okay, we will be focusing on this first question. Here we can see that four equations are given. Correct? No? Four equations are there and four unknowns are there. x1, x2, x3, x4. Fine. And these are the linear equations. Okay. So I hope you understand the linear equations. We have covered the concept of linear equation also. Right now, you cannot see the power of x1 or x2, x3, x4. Okay. So, these are the linear equations. And by Gauss elimination method, we are going to find the values of x1, x2, x3 and x4. Okay. So, we are going to take help of augmented matrix. Fine. So, we will be seeing that what is augmented matrix. When we use this Gauss elimination method, we actually use it in two stages. Okay. Stage 1 is what? Stage 1 is called as forward elimination process. And the stage 2 is what? This is called as back substitution. Okay. So, these two stages will be there. And we will be seeing how to get the values of x1, x2, x3 and x4. Okay. So, if four unknowns are there, then four equations are there. In the second question, you will be seeing that only three equations are there. But only three unknowns are also there. Okay, so let's see how to solve this question number one. Now, what we are seeing here, this way of writing the system is what? This is called augmented matrix. Okay, what is augmented matrix? Okay, so if you will see this system, okay, so here, if you want to write this system into matrix form, so how you will be writing it? You will be writing down the coefficients in one place. Okay, so I am writing down only the coefficient. These are what? 5, 1, 1, 1. They are the coefficient. Only in the left hand side I am seeing. If nothing is there with x2, that means 1 is there for sure. Fine, no? What about my second row? The coefficient is 1, 7, 1, 1. For third row, this is what? 1, 1, 6, 1. And the fourth row is having 1, 1, 1, 4. These are the coefficients of the equations and they are from the left hand side of the equation. Fine, no? So, I have written down in one matrix format. Okay. And then I am just writing down one column matrix. Okay. And what this column matrix will have? All the variables. Okay. So, this is x1, this is x2, x3 and x4. Right now, only four variables are there. x1, x2, x3, x4. Fine. So, I am writing down these four variables in only one column matrix. What is column matrix? Only one column is there. Fine. No? And rows, it all depends on how many rows are there in this system. Okay. And then in the right hand side, I am writing down only the constants which are present in the right hand side. So, constant is also in one column matrix. Only one column is there in this particular matrix and four rows are there. Okay. So, I can write this system of equation in this matrix format also. Fine. Okay. Now, what is my augmented matrix? Augmented is what? You are making the matrix little larger. Okay. So, you are augmenting this matrix with this constant also in the left hand side. Okay, that means what my augmented matrix will contain. Right now I have four columns. Okay, four columns and four rows. Fine. Now if I will be writing down in this fashion. Correct? No, this is my coefficient matrix. And if I am augmenting this constant also in this coefficient matrix. Okay, so this is nothing but my final matrix on which I have to work on. Fine. So, this way I am going to write and this will be called as augmented matrix. Okay. You are just making it little larger by one column. Okay. This matrix only I am going to work on. So, what my first step is? The same thing what we keep on seeing that the very first row and very first column, whatever element is present here, 
I am trying to make it 1 and below this one, that means this will be called as leading 1. Below this leading 1, I will try to make all other elements as 0. Fine. So, same thing I am going to do here. I am seeing that the very first element is 5. This is not 1. But I can interchange the row 1 with even row 2, row 3 or row 4 so that I will be having 1 at this position. But whether I should interchange with this one or this one or this one. So it's always better to interchange row 1 with row 4. Why so? If I'm interchanging the row 1 with row 4, so I will be seeing that here I have 1 in 3 places. Okay. So that means if I'm keeping the lesser value in the first row, my calculation will be easier. Okay. Fine. So I have interchanged row 1. Okay. Everything. Okay. The augmented column also. Now, what next I have to do? This is my leading 1. I'm going to do this row transformation, this row transformation and this row transformation to make this entry as 0. These all three entries as 0 and why we are doing, how we are doing, we have seen it, right? You also know very well. So these things are done, fine. So now, so this is my resultant augmented matrix and the way we write augmented matrix, this is what? A colon B. B is what? B is the column matrix which is present in the right hand side. Okay. Okay. B is this column matrix. This is X and this is my A. Fine. So this augmented matrix. Okay. This one I am writing out A colon B. Fine. No. Okay. So same thing is written here. A colon B and this much is there. And then after doing these transformations, we have got this equivalent matrix. Okay. Next, what my job is? Should I make it one? This six? No. Why? Because in the Gauss elimination method, what now we are going to see something different is I am not interested in on this place now because I am not going to make the matrix into REA form or in the normal form. Here I am going to reduce the matrix into upper triangular matrix. Okay. So my goal is to convert the matrix into upper triangular matrix. And I hope that you have seen lecture number one where we have covered almost all theory of matrix. Where we have described what is the upper triangular matrix, what is the lower triangular matrix and all. So what is upper triangular matrix? So to convert this matrix into upper triangular matrix. Okay. I am just considering these four rows and four columns the square matrix okay so in this square matrix this is the main diagonal fine so my goal is to convert this matrix into upper triangular matrix that means all entries below main diagonal should be zero this is only what i'm going to do okay fine so i'm not worried about the elements which are present on diagonal or above diagonal. I am just interested in the elements which are present below main diagonal. Fine. So that only I have to convert into zero. Fine. So my first step was what? My first step was the same. Right. Below leading one all elements are zero. This is my step number one. Step number two is what? I can see that here already I have zero. Fine. So I just have to use some row transformation so that this entry will become zero. Fine, no. And one important point is what? To convert these entries into zero, I'm going to take help of this element. That means this is what? If this matrix is A, so this element is what? A11. Why A11? This is the first row and first column. This element, this is right now, this is 6. This element is what? A22. This element, which is 5, that means the diagonal elements, okay? So this element is what? This element is A33, okay? So when we are working on the second column, okay? I am going to take help of A22. If I am working on the third column, third column, that means what? Only this element I have to convert into 0. So to work, so if I am working on third column, I am going to take help of A33. This is the way to convert the matrix into upper triangular matrix. So that means what I'm saying here, I have to convert this minus 4 into 0. For that, I'm going to take help of A22, which is right now 6. But even you can see that to make the calculation easier, you can see that if you are going to divide this R2 by 3, okay, then it will be a little easier also. Why? This will be all integral values only. So 0, 3, 0, minus 1 and then 6 will be there. Fine, no? Yeah. So we have done it. 
Okay, so we have done it right now. 1 by 3 into R2. So then the equivalent matrix is here. And then this complete row is, this complete column is fine. Now what I'm going to do, this is my principal diagonal. And below principal diagonal, I should have zeros. So here this element should be zero. For that, I'm going to take help of this A22, this element which is present on the diagonal. So that means here is the row transformation which we are doing. R4 is now, this is R4, fine, no. So R4 is what? 2 into R2 plus R4. That means 2 into 2 and then minus 4 will give you 0, fine. So here I got 0 and after that, whatever values I am getting, I am not at all worried. So after this transformation, I have got 0, 0, minus 4, minus 21 and then 46. That is fine. Okay, now what my next goal is? Below this principal diagonal, I have only one element which is not 0. So fine. So to make this minus 4, 0, what I am going to do? I am going to take help of this element which is A33. So what I am going to do? I am going to perform this row transformation. Fine. And this row transformation says what? Right now this is minus 4. So I am going to perform 4 into R3 plus 5 into R4. That means what? That means only you are just multiplying here 5 with 4 and then 4 with 5. Accordingly, you are going to put plus or minus sign. Fine, no. Same thing you had done here also. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write down 4 into R3. R3 is 5. Okay. And then plus 5 into R4. R4 is minus 4. So finally, it is going to give you 0. So here you will get 0. And the same operation you are going to perform on this element also, on this augmented column also. Fine, na? So finally, we got this much. Now, what should we do? Now, I'm going to stop here only. Why? Because now this matrix has become the upper triangular matrix. So my stage 1 is completed. That is forward elimination is completed. Now, I'm going to start the stage 2. What is stage 2? Stage 2 is the back substitution method. So how I am going to do here? So with this equivalent matrix, I am going to write down the equation form. Okay, that means what I am going to write down here. Now instead of augmented matrix, I am writing down the system of linear equations. So very first equation is what? x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus 4 x4 is minus 6. And why so? Here you can write down, right? This is what? This is for x1. This is for x2. This is for x3. This is for x4. This is what? 1 into x1 plus 1 into x2 plus 1 into x3 plus 4 into x4 equals actually this is minus 6. So I have done the mistake here. So this is your minus 6. Fine, no. So this is your minus 6. So this is your minus 6. So since we have not worked on row number 1, so earlier it was not detected. Now what is your second equation? 2 into x2 minus x4 equals 6. Fine, no. 2 into x2 minus x4 equals 6. And similarly the third equation, what? 5 into x3. Okay, 5 into x3 minus 3 into x4 equals 1. Okay. And what is your fourth equation? Minus 117 x4 equals 234. Okay. And here only you can see that this equation, because we are now doing the back substitution, we see that minus 117 x4 is 234. That means x4 is how much? x4 is minus 2. Fine. No. Now, you are going to substitute minus 2 in place of x4. That means the third equation will become what? 5 into x3 minus 3 into minus 2 equals 1. That means 5 x3 plus 6 equals 1. That means x3 is how much? 1 minus 6 will become what? Minus 5. And then divided by 5 which is minus 1. Fine, no? So, x3 is minus 1. Similarly, you are going to substitute minus 1 here. And instead of x4, you are going to substitute minus 2 here. And then finally, you are going to get x2 as 2. And then you are going to substitute x2, x3, x4. And finally, you are going to get x1, which is 1. Okay. So you got the values of x1, x2, x3, x4 by cos elimination method. Okay. So you have solved the system of linear equation using cos elimination method. Okay. So now this is the second question. So second question exactly same way we are going to perform. Here I have only three equations and only three variables are there. Right? 
so now i am going to write down this system of linear equation in which format i am going to write down in ax equals b form fine no that means a is what a is the coefficient matrix only the coefficients i am going to write down okay you know how to write the coefficients fine so now what i am going to do here okay so this is my a x is what x is what x is the column matrix where i'm just going to write down the variables x y z are the variables fine and here this is the column matrix again that means only one column that means only one column is there and i'm going to just write down the constants which are present in my right hand side of this system so this is your 5209 okay so this way i'm going to represent this system of linear equations okay fine and next what i am going to do i am going to write down the augmented matrix because i am going to work on the augmented matrix augmented matrix is what exactly same thing what my coefficient matrix is there i am going to write down i am just i am just enlarging this matrix with one more column the column is what i am going to add this constant also in this matrix so this is augmented by one more column right okay so now this matrix is ready on which i have to work so what my goal is i am going to write down the matrix into the upper triangular matrix fine no but before that i can see that the very first element is 2 and here my first element is 1 okay so i am going to interchange row 1 and why i am doing so because if 1 will be present here so calculation will be much easier i am going to interchange row 1 with row 3 this is the way to write augmented matrix fine and next what is my goal i am going to convert this matrix into the upper triangular matrix okay what is upper triangular matrix all the elements below principal diagonal will be zero so i have to convert these two elements zero using this element using a11 okay so this is okay so what i am going to do r2 is minus 2 into r1 plus r2 r3 is minus 2 into r1 plus r3 and finally this is this equivalent matrix has come fine now what is my next goal i am just going to convert this element into zero by using by using a22 okay no by using this a22 that means r3 is what 3 r2 plus r3 3 into 3 into minus 1 plus 3 will give you zero and whatever i am getting here whatever i am getting here i don't have any problem but whatever operation i am performing i have to perform on this augmented column also okay to consider the matrix into the upper triangular matrix i'm just going consider the square matrix but the operations which i am performing i have to perform on this augmented column also fine no okay so you have got here also zero you have got zero here also now your job is done that means your stage 1 is done stage 2 is what stage 2 is the back substitution method so to do the back substitution what i am going to write down i am going to write down this matrix into the equation form right that means this is for my x this is for y this is for z so 1 into x fine so 1 into x plus 1 into y plus 1 into z will be giving you 9 similarly minus y minus 3 z will give you minus 18 and then minus 4 z will give you minus 20 and then you are doing the back substitution you are going to get the value of z as 5 you are putting the value of z here getting the value of y and putting the value of y and z and you are going to get the value of x fine no and this way we get the values of unknowns right so this was my gauss elimination method if you find this class useful please like and subscribe my channel thank you